Hey guys, Kevin here from MA Performance, and today we're going to be talking about two of Honda's most popular engines they've made within the past two decades. The K20 and 24, as well as the L15 from cars like the Acura RSX, TSX, and Civic SIs. Well, at least for the US market. The K20 was first introduced to the US market when the DC5 Acura RSX came to the States back in 2002. Though there was a K20 in the 2002 Civic Si, it wasn't the good one as it didn't make power or hold as much power. The 2002 to 2005 RSX had the desirable K20 A2 which made 200 horsepower and 142 foot-pounds of torque NA. Throughout the years, the US market received other just as potent variants such as the K20Z1, Z3, K24A2, and so on. Now, let's talk about the L series, specifically the L15B7, which was introduced in the 2016 Civic and also placed in the 10th Gen 17SI. As you may have seen in our other videos, we have a shop car that we've done quite a bit of R&D on to make over about 500 wheel horsepower and run a 10 second quarter mile pass with ease. These little dual overhead cam engines came with 175 horsepower in the non-SI and over 205 in the SI models with a 10.6 to 1 compression for the non-SI and a 10.3 for the SI models. Unlike the earlier K20s and 24s, these come with a single scroll internally gated turbo capable of making about 300 wheel horsepowers with bolt-ons and a tune. With that said, there have been numerous companies making swap kits for the K-series engines into the 90s Honda chassis over the decade. And now companies making K-swap mount kits for other non-Hondas such as Miatas, FRSs, the S chassis, and even BMWs. As with many new engines and the nostalgic love for the older EG and DC2 chassis, there definitely have been mount kits created for these newer technology L-series engines as well. So, the question comes to be, if you're to look for your next build for your RSX, TSX, Accord, 8th, 9th, 10th gen Civic, what should you pick for your goals and why? So, the L15 B7 and a 10th gen SI comes from the factory with a 1.5 liter four-cylinder turbo, 205 horsepower, 190 foot-pounds of torque, a drive-by wire, dual variable valve timing, and is direct fuel injected with a 10.3 to 1 compression. The stock turbo setup maxes out at around 300 wheel horsepower with bolt-ons and a tune. And the stock block safe horsepower range for dailying is about 400 wheel horsepower. Even though we made ours up to about 500 on the stock bottom end, it isn't necessarily recommended for a normal commuter setup. Obviously ours is a drag car. As far as tuning options go, flash blaze tuning such as Honda or K-Tuner is available and anything beyond those needs will require a full standalone such as a Motec which tends to get expensive. One of the biggest pros that the L15 has is with it being a newer engine, they can be found and haven't been scavenged by all those others who have found out how potent they can be. We're looking at you as chassis and BMW boys. As for cons, this is sort of a con, but it's a direct injection, so it has all of the same issues. Uh, but as far as the solution, there's a lot of benefits as far as its efficiency and even having more performance properties like keeping the fuel cooler by not having to pass through intake ports, runners, touching manifold walls, etc. But the problem really arises when you reach horsepower levels that are above the limit they're designed for, which on most platforms isn't far from stock horsepower levels. The aftermarket simply hasn't caught up yet. And when it comes to upgrading direct injectors and pumps, those that have found ways to provide upgrades generally come at a pretty high cost as opposed to your traditional port injection, fuel injectors, and fuel pump. Port injection is a solution that is often used with great success, but it also adds another level of complexity and cost. Needing a separate ECU to control the injectors, usually beefing up the low pressure fuel system, adding extra fuel lines and intake manifold spacers are all required to make port injection conversions work. 
As far as we know, we hold the world record for a stock bottom end L15 at 513 wheel horsepower and 379 foot pounds. Again, though we've been able to make this happen, we definitely don't necessarily recommend it and trying to keep levels around that 400 wheel horsepower for your daily commuter, weekend track car, or any of the above when you're staying on a stock block. Now, as for the K20 A2, Z1, Z3, etc. before the direct injection, it was a 2 liter VTEC 197 to 210 horsepower range with a high compression engine. Some were drive by wire, some were cable, dependent on the years. There's port fuel injection and naturally aspirated in stock form with simple bolt ons and a tube can yield generally somewhere between 210 and 220 horsepower. Now, with a Frankenstein K20 and 24 bottom end and upgraded cams, you can see, usually see somewhere around that 260 horsepower range. Stock long blocks, both on the K20 and 24, have made over 700 wheel horsepower with proper tuning and a turbo setup. Pretty impressive. Stock short blocks have been pushed to make over 800 wheel horsepower with proper tuning. As far as tuning options, there are systems such as the Honda, the K Tuner, and AEM EMS for the A2 and Z1 based platforms, but only flashes for the 8th and 9th gen K20s. And if, of course, you go a full standalone, you're looking to really go all out. As for the pros, these engines can be found in a lot of cars, such as the 0 02 to 06 RSX, 06 Plus SI, and the K24s and the TSXs are also strong. As for cons, a factory worn timing chain tensioner and chains do stretch and fail from wear and tear and just the age, also those high revs. There is a solution though. If you get a stronger one by companies such as K-Tuned or Hybrid Racing, you really won't have those issues. If road racing or drifting, there should be a baffled oil pan to also prevent that oil starvation issues. Though, as far as we know, the highest stock bottom end has made mid-800s for testing purposes and is really not recommended. Again, these are going to be great power numbers, but we really recommend keeping the power level between about that 500 and 600, depending on your setup and tune if you're looking to continue to have a fun street weekend warrior. With that said, and as we all know, when rebuilt with forged internals to handle high horsepower, it's a completely different story for both of these engines. With the general overview of each platform in their stockish form, what engines do you guys think that you'd go for in your next swap or car of choice? Are you a high horsepower guy looking for max out stock platforms or are you more of a weekend warrior wanting to have just enough horsepower and a newer engine is found in the L15? With whatever it may be, the choice is ultimately up to you as you get to mod these engines in the cars they came in, or these days you can really put them into anything that you want to. If you like drifting, driving, whatever you want to do, there's going to be a platform for you. If you'd like to hear a more in-depth breakdown of each of these engines or would like further details, let us know down below or feel free to call one of our experts so we can help you source all of the parts for your needs. Either way, let us know down below in the comments if this has helped you make your decision or let us know what you'd like us to cover next. Till next time, like, subscribe, and tell your friends why you think whatever car you choose is better than theirs.